Good morning from Berlin. It's Sunday the 8th of November. It's just after 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm having a walk through the park before breakfast. I'm guessing that in the summer you can come along and take any of these rowboats out. Take them out onto the lake. The church bells are ringing out. It's Remembrance Sunday here in Berlin and across Europe and across the world. Ironically, we're going to be at Sachsenhausen concentration camp at 11 o'clock this morning, or certainly on our way to it. So it's very poignant to be in this neck of the woods on the day that we remember. <laughs> Okay, well, we're off the train. We're in the town of Rheinberg. And we're just down the road from the concentration camp. Here's our tour party. So this is actually the administrative centre of the entire concentration camp network in occupied Europe during the Second World War. One building, roughly 120 staff. at the Red Dot. This building in front of us is the reception area today, as you can see. During the era of Sachsenhausen, it had a couple of different roles, actually. It was a slaughterhouse, an abattoir at one point in history. It was also an armory, so a weaponry at another point in history. But we're going to be walking down the Camp Street, which is just over here, and entering through Tower A, the control tower of the camp. So this is the entrance that the prisoners would have passed through on a daily basis. I mean, if you've been watching the media this year, I'm sure you've seen the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz concentration camp, the 70th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day, and of course, Victory in Japan Day. But most important for us here in Berlin, the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Sachsenhausen. This camp would eventually be liberated on the 22nd of April, 1945, by Soviet and Polish forces. They were the first ones to arrive here at Sachsenhausen and see exactly the extent of the war crimes that had taken place here, of course. Now, what we see before us here are photographs detailing both the final month and the previous few months to that. I mean, quite interesting here. This photograph is detailing what we call the white buses. So Sachsenhausen was a work camp, not an extermination camp. People came here literally to be worked to death. 20,000 acres in all, although only perhaps a quarter of it still remains today. 
the main work that the prisoners were given was in the brick plant to create bricks for Nazi Germany. This is the SS guardhouse which was full of food for all of the Nazi guards and this is the entrance into the actual prison or the labour camp through these gates here and here of course you had practically no food so we're now heading into the area of the camp for prisoners so this is guard tower A which overlooks the whole of the prison camp on the other side and if we look up at the clock the time is frozen on the exact time of liberation Here it is. A lot of the buildings have been flattened, uh, but the markings on the ground still exist. As you can see over there in the distance. As I said, it was set out in such a way. There's one still standing over there set out in such a way that from this guard tower you could see down all of the buildings. So at least two prisoners could be hung here at any one given time. And you can see of course the exact location. It's right in front of the roll call area. So it's almost acting like a warning to the other prisoners. What can happen if you step out of line? Hanging? Usually if you stole some supplies from the camp, that would be considered a hanging offence here under the rules of the camp. They're stealing food in particular, that was definitely a hanging offence, I would say. It's a uniform worn by one of the inmates. The F in the badge indicates that he was, or she was, French. Along with the prison number. This was an execution tool used by the Nazis to murder Soviet prisoners of war. They'd be lined up for a medical check to check their height and there'd be a shooter behind the device in that crevice. And as they stood for attention, they'd be shot. This was only, this only came to light because of some of the inmates who wrote a message, put it in a bottle and buried it on the grounds. It was found in the 50s. Of course, uh, it was deemed a war crime in Nuremberg. But the shooter never saw his victim of the fact that he was behind the wall. This is an underground cellar. This is the cold store for hanging things like meat. Although meat was very rarely given to the prisoners, it was occasionally Christmas Eve, Hitler's birthday, things like that. In 1961, the camp opened up as a memorial to remember what happened during the Nazi and Soviet years. And this was a monument built within the camp by the Soviets and the East Germans to remember all of the victims of the camp, but in particular the communists. 
And there we have a uh, Soviet soldier rescuing two communists. But underneath, a load of countries, all who had prisoners kept within the camp. It was an execution trench, very simple. So of course, firing squads could operate from above, shooting down, as well as within, within the execution trench as well. The whole idea of having the logs of wood on either side to avoid the ricochet of bullets, very simple. There could also be uh, gallows, mobile gallows installed just underneath, on the far side there, four prisoners being hung at any one time. And that table that we saw back in the exhibition that was actually established in here. So the beating of prisoners was done within here as well. And just through here, you can see this lower section, that's a bit more solidly built, that worked as sort of a temporary mortuary, both for the firing squads, as well as for Station Z, just over here. We'll enter into Station Z itself, just over here. In a couple of moments, we'll move around and we'll have a look at this quotation again. But first, we'll go into Thing we see, of course, that Station Z was partially destroyed in 1952. Uh, the Soviet and East German military police attempted to destroy the building with dynamite, but as you can see, largely a failure. For example, the ovens we can still see just over here. Now, what we're going to do is walk around the circumference of the original foundations, the old rooms. We'll see each individual room and speak about what its original function as well, of course. As you can see, some of the ruins are beginning to sink. It's the problem that we have in this part of the world. It's being built on very soft soil. If you've been on three in Berlin for any amount of time. This is Station Z and the steps into the gas chamber. This was mostly dismantled by the Soviets and East Germans after the war. So in the centre, like yeah. I said, uh, there is a fake drain. Right the this would have been the doctor's waiting room. So a grand phone record player would have been standing right in the centre. Also, of course, the Nazis would boast that they could process 500 bodies in a 24-hour period. Two to three times, uh, two to three bodies every time, usually, at different periods throughout the day. They would be assisted then, of course, by prisoners. Taking corpses from the mortuary, you actually see a real drain just over here, from the mortuary to the ovens. Eventually as well, it's interesting, just before the beginning of the Second World War, they would offer the relatives the opportunity to buy ash as a souvenir of their relative, of their friend. Of course, the possibility of getting your own relative's ash, slim enough. You know, it's just to exploit the prisoners. There would have been barbed wire running around the top here as well. But this is a T-shaped building, another T-shaped structure. Only one wing of the building remains today. You can see some of the windows are open, mm -hmm. some of them blocked off. That's for solitary confinement, or what they would call confinement in the dark. So, both two types of prisoners could be kept here. Both the special prisoners, the VIP prisoners. So, for example, we had a former Austrian Chancellor here, a Spanish Prime Minister, a French Prime Minister, two former Norwegian Prime Ministers kept here, a Catholic and Protestant clergy. This is the Jewish barracks where hundreds of Jewish would sleep whilst at the camp. Usually three in a bed. Well, we've now finished our tour of Sachsenhausen concentration camp. We're off back to the train station to catch the train back into Berlin where we're going to spend a couple more hours just. Um, looking around the shops probably and, and uh, then we're going to head off back to the airport. Well, we're back at the hotel and we're going to collect our luggage 
and get on off to the airport.